Hello and welcome to The Deep Cut. I'm Bob DeMarco. The Deep Cut is a chance for knife junkies like you and me to go deep into certain specific topics, to nerd out for a good hard half hour or so, and then dip. And tonight, uh, our first night uh, with Deep Cut, our first time with The Deep Cut, I should say, uh, we have our good friend Jimmy Slash. Josh, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> well, I had so much fun last time I was here. Oh yeah, we had a great time, and and uh, people seem to love that that conversation you and I had. Um, when uh, Jim and I came up with this idea for the deep cut, you know, we could just have these little conversations where we just where where we have a chance to uh, to nerd out ad nauseum. Um, First thing I thought was you. Not that you're a nerd, but I know that no, cool. can, a lot of people think that <laughs> you can nerd out hard on the XL cold steel folders, and that's oh, yeah. what we're going to talk about tonight. No, that's no, how no. I discovered you. Oh, okay, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I was actually uh, I wanted to find out more information about this knife, the signature. Uh, oh, I'm glad you brought that out. That's one of the ones I got ready right here. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I had heard, seen about this, and I was like, I wonder if anyone has a video, and you were the first one. Oh man, I love this knife. I've I've I had to keep one at all times. It's one of those things. It's like Mel Gibson, that one movie where he has to have catcher in the rye. So I gotta <laughs> have one of these all the time. And man, I love this knife. I always have to have one. It's such the XHP on this thing and the, the teeth on this thing. What's that? Here I got some 550 right here. This stuff just mangles thing where you cut it. If oh. I'm doing this wrong, you let me know. I'm just kind of freaking out because i haven't played with this knife in a little bit this, <laughs> just shreds things oh my it, god so wait you said awful. you said you're never without one of these does does that mean you carry one all the time or you mean just in your collection and just in my collection it's one of those things i always have to have now i have carried this and you know it's weird for some reason maybe it's the grivix or, or it's not as overbearing in the pocket as you think it might be it's not like carrying the the, even if they're carrying the Cormax, even they're getting a, a bigger, longer blade on this thing. So yeah, yeah. The the one problem with carrying this is uh, just that that iron cross texturing or whatever they call that. Uh, yeah. With with the clip, you know, you got to take care of that. That's why I've never actually carried this one. I don't think. Yeah, I think I luck out that, and I don't pay. If you watch my videos, I hardly ever, and I know people get on me all the time. I never bother with the clips because I just jam knives in my pocket, and that's uh, that's one of the reasons I. I got lanyards on everything, and so I can just grab it and pull it out. But yeah, I could definitely see that being a problem with, especially as tight as Cold Steel makes their clips. Yeah, this would be a huge problem. This would tear up your church slacks really badly. <laughs> yeah. So. And actually, this is the kind of knife that would go well in church slash church. Well, certainly. Slack. Uh, you, you see know. somebody reaching for that offering plate that shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. so. <laughs> you mentioned the Formax Scout, and this is a great opportunity to pull out the Formax Scout that you so generously gifted me. Uh, I love this knife. This thing is astounding. And actually, um, a couple weeks back, I texted you and said, uh, if I send this to you, will you put one of your signature lanyards on it in my chosen colors? You said, absolutely, send it off. But I haven't been able to part with it yet. So soon it so will. Then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I do carry I do. I carry mine a lot. I, I carried it this week when I went to uh, Tennessee. I have this on me a lot. And if it's not on me, it's in the truck. And yeah, I love this. I had this one lasered. They negatived me. So I, I kind of like a Santa of a different persuasion, but, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So I love the Formax. Of course, the regular Formax, which I have right here. This is the first, the first video I ever did, which was four years ago almost last Friday is on this mm -hmm. knife here. The, the first, um, oh man, mine was a second gen four max I did on this video. And then I kind of went off on a weird tangent in my subsequent videos, but oh, this, this knife still is just every time I get this knife in my hand, I can't believe how awesome it is. And I've had this for four years and it's just, well, just well. amazing. Congratulations on uh, four years coming up. That's awesome. Oh, thank and you. uh, your videos are so great. And everyone everyone loves Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Slash. Would you say, Jimmy, that uh, the uh, Formax is your favorite large cold steel or your favorite uh, Demco design? The Formax is my favorite production knife ever, period. It's not even close. If I had to take one production knife with me somewhere, 
it would be this knife. There are others that are, you know, I like a lot, and, and but this one, this is my favorite. Started out, started out right and kept trying to find something better. I, I never have. It's just an amazing knife. You got, especially on, and even on the, the scout, you know, the scout comes down a little bit mm -hmm. in, in the steel. You know, people will not beat the mess out of this thing and the steel held up nicely, but just the way these feels, but you can, you know, awesome high end steel, the way it just feels in your hand, the things you can do with this thing. You can't kill it. There's, I don't think there's a human alive that could kill that lock without, you know, some other kind of machinery involved. This thing, it just, for me, it's just a perfect kind of knife. So uh, to those of us like myself who don't quite understand, tell us the difference between uh, the American made, the Italian made. What, what was the story with that? Okay, I'll start from the beginning. There was the first generation of the Formax, and for me, there's the perfect. You know, sometimes they start bad and then they get better, and I think they started perfect, and then they went down a little bit. I don't know if y'all can see this. But the first generation had that little dog leg in the lock bar. You can see it kind of cuts down there. And it was smoothed out better. The finish was awesome on the scales as far as the way it feels in your hand. And I did a couple tests early on where I, I put a blindfold on and I could feel the difference between all the four maxes. Hmm. And so this was the perfect version of this. The second one, the second generation, it came with the flattened out lock bar. But the, a lot of them. When I got them, and this is the problem I had with mine because I couldn't figure out what the problem was. The lock bar, when it was closed, was actually poking up a bit. I don't oh, know, yeah. like an eighth of an inch out of that back. And so I got in touch with Cold Steel. And this was what's really cool about that second generation is I got in touch with Cold Steel, and then they decided to fix it. So they had people sending in their Formaxes, but they weren't sending them into Cold Steel. They were sending them to Andrew Demko. So it was like Demko was getting his hands on your production Formax. It's almost like he was turning it into a mid tech because he'd actually fixed your knife, which was, it was worth it not being perfect the first <laughs> time to have him fix it. So that would work out really cool. That's what's called an accidental mid tech. Yeah, exactly. There you go. We call that. <laughs> and then the third generation still had the flat lock bar, but they'd fixed the, 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 the lock bar raising up a little bit. That was a third generation American. And so it was really good. That still wasn't as good as this one. The fit and finish, the smoothed out scales weren't the same, but it was awesome. You know, this is just nitpicky stuff. And then they went to Italy and the fit and finish on the Italian ones was a lot like this. It came back to, you get the camera up here, the, the log, the dog leg on the lock bar, mm. smoothed out scales. And there was a small issue when I opened mine up, they had kind of, they kind of jimmy rigged the the pivot a little bit because I don't know what happened. It was like they drilled out a circular hole on both sides of the scale when they actually needed a D hole. Oh yeah. And they stuck a little a little iron bar in there. I you know they talked to Andrew Demko and, and I believe when he says that it didn't have anything to do with the strength and the function of it and it just kind of it bothered me a little bit that. It was done that way on such an expensive knife. You're gonna pay, you know, 350, 400 bucks on knife. And it, I, so that kind of bothered me. But as far as the way it works and the way it feels, it's just, it's just the same. If I'd never opened it, I would never known the difference. So. Wait, wait. Essentially, that's a mistake, right? I, I'm thinking that somehow they made a mistake and had to go back and fix it with that little, little piece. Okay. Because so the, right. the regular formats aren't that way. Okay. Yeah, I could see how that would stick in your craw. You're paying top dollar and and you look at it and you're like, hmm, this seems unnecessary. It seems like, a, yeah, an afterthought. It's like when you look at the old F4 Phantom fighter plane. Uh, I've heard a lot of engineers talk about it. It's an awesome plane, but there are so many weird design issues with that, you know, different angles they use to make up for mistakes. And, you know, they ended up getting a great plane out of it, but still, it was a bunch of mistakes. Right, right. Just little things that would have made it perfect. Yeah, like if they if they had not had that, it would be right up there with that first gen. There would be nothing different. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference with a blindfold on. And so, everything else was just just perfect on that knife. And I think they've come back with another generation of American Four Maxes, but I haven't really checked on them since then. So what what I love about these XL Cold Steel folders is that. Um, First of all, their their quality and their strength are kind of without question at this point. Um, so that's that's kind of a given. It, you would you would have good cause to worry about a large 
knife like that, uh, like one of these cold steels that wasn't very, very strongly made and proven as such. You know, oh, that's, sure. a lot, that's a lot of steel to be swinging around on a pivot. Um, oh, yeah. But what I like best, knowing that that is taken care of, like the quality in the build, is that you have an opportunity to have knives of all different layers. This is of Scottish origin. Uh, this is of Spanish origin, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. this is of Japanese origin, even though I like to pretend it's of Filipino origin. And, you know, you got the Chris from Malaysia. I mean, how cool is this? And then, of oh, course, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. The, the, the great all American. Oh, that's a Tanto, but that's an American Tanto. But the Bowie everywhere. They have the greatest. Oh, man. Yeah, I need I need I don't have a recon right now. The XL oh, no. recon. Yeah, I had one I gave to a buddy of mine and. Yeah, I wish I had. Because <laughs> you yeah, know, I love that knife. That's people, a great one. People leave comments on the video for this, uh, the uh, the XL Recon Tanto. Like, hey, do you want to sell that? And I, I guess I hadn't realized that these have gone out of production. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, is I'm that the XHP. Always the last to find out. Yeah, this is XHP. Oh yeah, shoot yeah, yeah. That's a good knife. I mean, I know that I know that the XHP they switched to S35, but I thought they were still making these XLs. I guess not. So what to you is the, you know, what's the reason, say, for this knife, uh, which is, uh, yes, it's definitely a novelty. This is a seven and a half inch uh, Navaja, basically. Right. A Spanish fighting knife. What is, <laughs> what is in this day and age, in the age of the gun, uh, what is the value of this giant knife? I think there's a couple values to it. I, I and I know it, a lot of people don't, especially the guys that are strictly, I have three knives and they're all tools and, and they're not going to get this value. There's a shock value of it. As far as the conversation piece, it's, it's, you bring that out. I had, I didn't have the, I have that. I have the XL somewhere. I didn't want to waste any time going searching for it for you, but I do have the large here and I carried this. For some, I, in fact, my wife told me to carry it. I was going to carry something uh -huh. smaller. And, she, and I said, we're going to this party over here. and We're going to have some friends. She said, you need to carry She loves this knife. She loves the shininess of it. She loves it. She said, you need to carry this and, you know, show everybody. So I carried it. I wasn't going to break it out. But then everybody started saying, hey, you know, what knife are you carrying? I pulled this out and you would have thought I was a, <laughs> like a street gangster, you know, and the eyes just opened, and I think as a conversation piece, and as a useful knife, this thing is awesome. Mm -hmm. And I know it's the age of the gun, but this thing is going to deter enough people. If you're in that, and I'm not, I'm not a great knife fighter. I'm not saying that. I'm not street street guy or you know anything bad, dude. But you pull this out, just having this is a lot of a deterrent. I think gun having a gun is a lot of a deterrent just having it you yeah, pull this yeah. out unless the other guy is packing you're gonna you know be in a good situation so i think it, and as a tool if you're one of those tool guys you take this thing at especially yours but you know even this one you get this thing you grab this thing back here and you're mm -hmm. chopping all you want to chop with that you can chop all day with this that triad lock's not going anywhere you got the s35 vn good steel this thing is going to serve you in all kinds of different ways. So I think there's a lot of great reasons to have this knife. Now, if you're just carrying knife because you want to clean your fingernails, <laughs> you could do it with this knife. It would be fun. It's great to see faces when then you pull something like this out. But I think as a collector, you want something like this. I think it's as a useful knife. If you're taking something in the woods, you know, why not have something big and, and not just this one, but just maybe even the G10 one. It's super useful. I mean, yeah, yeah. we're not used to seeing something humongous, so we think well, it doesn't have a use, but it definitely has a use. Well, Lynn Thompson says that you can clean your fingernails with a large knife. Oh, he's yeah, he's totally right. Yeah, you clean your fingernails and then hack a hog in half with it. So, yeah. whatever you got to do with it. So this is my uh, large Espada, and they, somewhere along the line, changed the blade shape from what I have here to what you have. And I want to get what you have also. But if you notice, uh, the, um, the top flat is shorter. The swedge here is a lot longer, and it looks a little less Bowie-ish than yours. Oh, let me see that. 
Oh yeah, sure enough. Oh yeah, I can see that. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So they go and change the design on me, and now I have to go get another one. You know. There you go. You got to do it. <laughs> so of the, of the most recent uh, knives to come out, uh, this is one of them. Uh, what what have been your favorites, or, or what is your favorite? I think my favorite knife of this whole year, the the Formax Scout. I mean, this is this gives people the opportunity to put this in their hands. They put a Formax in their hands, and and it's for about one fourth of the price I originally paid for the Formax. And that, I like the idea of, of a whole bunch of people just getting that experience. Yeah. And for for different knife people, you know, I don't collect anything. I don't have a nice car. You know, my truck's 16 years old. So buying a $300, $400 knife is not a huge deal. But somebody out there that, that has 100 bucks or 90 bucks to spend on a knife, they're finally getting that experience. And that's really, really cool to me. I like that idea. So I don't just have to sit there and talk about how awesome the Formax is. They can they can really get into this and, and understand what I'm talking about and then have just about 99% of the experience of having a real Formax. This is about as close as you're going to get. So... I think it's awesome. Uh, much like the uh, AD10 and the AD15 that they brought out. Uh, Just exactly which, like that, yeah. Which are so, you know, uh, I doubt I'll ever have a real one of either of those. Um, but for, who knows, maybe I will someday. But for now, those those will do the trick until the real thing gets here. Um, oh, yeah, they're so close. Then it, and yeah, just, and I'd said that in my video. I, I, I think I said 95% of the knife for, you know, twenty percent of the price. It was, yeah. It, it's it's right there. I mean, the the fifteen and the it, I love the ten. The ten was my favorite knife from last year, but the but the fifteen and the ten are so close to the, the customs. It's and, and I knew one guy that just lost. You know, just got crazy and sold all his eighty tens because he figured that the the market was going to die on the customs because of how close that eighty ten was. Wow. So. Yeah, it's an awesome knife. You're going to get just about all the experience of the custom as you need. Now, you understand, I because I am a you know, huge fan of his, the customs have their own place. But as far as usability and what you're getting out of it, you can't beat, you can't beat those cold steel versions. So what do you think of the Chris? Here's the Voyager Chris that came out. I have a... Uh... I have one of the aluminum, raw aluminum um, snaggletooth MFs on there, you know, so that I can deploy it in a rush. That's right. Uh, but what do you think of these uh, Chris's? I know a I lot of people. I love the Chris. I love it. I love that thing so much. That was that was a great knife. So that, yeah, that's right up there for this this knife this year. I just loved it. And, it, you know, it's totally useful. I, you know, people see that and they're like, well, you know, what are you going to use it for? I have a video and I don't mean to keep plugging my videos, but. I have a video where I totally cut into some brisket with that thing and sliced it up. And it wasn't even just for a novelty at one at that point. That thing cuts through whatever you're gonna cut it through. It's it's amazing. It's a great cutting knife. It's super useful. Well, it reminds me of uh, a, a larger version of a bread knife I used to have that had just long undulating, well, it had undulating curves like this, but it had a lot of them, you know, in a shorter run. But the same concept is there. Uh, it's yeah, it's ferocious looking, but also, I mean, that's kind of like a serrated blade in a way. You know, you're getting the peaks and the valleys, or it's like a a triple recurve, you know, with a with a uh, with a hawk bill at the end. It's just a wicked, um, you know, wicked kind of thing. And I have a real one back here, and uh, oh wow, that's the, awesome. You know, they are. It's a ferocious weapon to be sure but i i was really curious about i know you use these things a lot your large cold steels mine mine pretty much sit and get played with on on the whole uh but what have you besides cutting brisket have you used this in an actual practical way have you carried this around and been like oh i need a knife and pulled this out i've used it to like cut string or 550 or stuff like that. i don't you know i don't have a lot of instances where i actually <laughs> use knives but not not outside of normal use, but yeah, I've cut string with it. I've cut meat with it. Outside the brisket, I I've cut other hunks of meat with it. It's like I have a bunch of kitchen knives, but you know, I like to have a little fun too. You know, grab something that I normally wouldn't use. So yeah, oh yeah, it's I've used it for different things. I've carried it a bunch. I've carried it when you know just to have it with me. Again, for that shock factor, 
yeah like, hey look what i have factor you know kind of thing yeah so. people people are like what it, you know, what on earth am i looking at <laughs> that's right kind of like this too the uh the raja oh that, man loads of raja yeah that's I wish, such a great knife i wish i got the dressed up version of this you know the, oh yeah yeah I, I had a chance to buy one on ebay about two and a half years ago and then they just went nuts i think it was like 250 bucks and i wavered and wavered and somebody bought it and now you can't you can't even touch them yeah oh, it's such a great knife it really is it is <laughs> heavy and and the uh, pocket clip is audaciously low on the handle and super yeah. long and just like yeah but if it if it weren't down there you know the thing would never clip onto most pockets so right yeah you know i guess it's assumed that a lot comes out so what what kind of testing do you do you do on these things now I haven't tested one of those actually. I had one for a little bit, and then I ended up giving it away. I give away a lot of my—I don't know—I just want to have a lot of people experience knives, but I haven't done any testing on that. I think I've tested the the smaller Raja, and I just you know chopped that into brisket, and I think I may have chopped into some some wood. But the the that huge Raja, oh my gosh, just the. Just the weight on that thing. I, I can't think of a better XL than that Raja for just everything you'd want to use it for. Just because of the, the heft on it, the the positions on your hand. It was an it's an amazing knife. That's a great knife. This one to me, and I'm not much of an outdoorsman, but this one to me always seemed like the one that's the most outdoor ready. Uh, yeah. like, like you mentioned, the the handholds are great, but especially down here, like this is kind of like an axe kind of like a, a kind of like well kind of like a kukri <laughs> yeah i was gonna say she's got that kukri feel to it right there yeah you're yeah. just gonna mow through whatever you want to mow through and let's see that's six inches on the blade and that's say another three and a half to four inches so, i mean you got a 10 inch reach there pretty yeah. impressive yeah it's awesome and that, that lock's gonna hold up to whatever you do to it you're gonna cut all day on that thing and your hands are gonna go before that lock even starts moving all. So why why do you think no one else is doing this? <laughs> I mean, obviously there's a market for it. I think a lot of one of the main reasons is that the triad lock makes those things mm -hmm. so useful. You get that same size blade, and you, you can see it in different blades. Even on like the uh, oh, what's that new one with the crisp blade? I think you pulled it out earlier. The um, tie light. Yeah, so even on the tie light, it's got that super strong liner lock. Yeah. But a lot of people ain't going to trust that thing like you are that triad lock. The triad lock is a huge seller for those humongous knives. I mean, it sells the smaller knives for like the, the Lawman and the, the Pro Light and those things. But, you know, you're, are you really going to be able to test it on a smaller? I mean, what are you going to do with a, a, you know, three and a half inch, three ounce knife? But you put that thing on those monster blades, and now all of a sudden you have a serious, serious tool. Yes. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people, I think, discount cold steel because of their commercials or what Lynn Thompson does. And they, he, his commercials sold me on cold steel. Yeah. The fact that these things can hold up to that beating is what gets the people involved. involved. I think the people that love these big knives are going to be dedicated to cold steel knives because they're indestructible. And then the people that are going to poo-poo, you know, what, what they do are not going to be the people that are going to like big knives in the first place. Because if you have any kind of, of desire to have that kind of knife, that triad lock is the selling point for it. You're not going to break it. There's nothing you can do. Yeah, I, I wrote an article for Knives Illustrated talking about these knives and how once you get uh, past the fact that they make excellent weapons, you know, excellent, uh, you know, the whole pedigree of cold steel and uh you know lynn thompson but they also make outstanding tools as you mentioned uh primarily because of that uh um triad lock but also you know this would make an outstanding tool and what i'm talking about are you know say you have very limited space in a backpack and uh, you need something to clear brush but to do other things you could take one of these they're small and light especially this and uh, oh, yeah. and you have something that can clear light brush you know, and it can also do a lot of other stuff. So, I mean, it is a, it is a, it, it is way overkill for an EDC. It is way overkill for your average pocket knife, but there are a lot of um, non knife fighting uses. You could put these big folders too. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And that Luzon with that secondary lock is right up there. You're not going right. to break that thing. 
No. A secondary lock on that Luzon is awesome. Yeah. I'm not much of a secondary lock kind of guy, but this Luzon is is uh, pretty sweet. And then you got that bird's beak in the back. Oh, yeah. All right. So uh, awesome. what I would like to see from Cold Steel, I've, I've mentioned this. I, I, I had one dream come true where I said a couple, uh, like a year and a half ago, I was like, I want to see a Chris Blade on one of their folders. Now I want to see a uh, uh, a sax. You know, they, they just came out with two different saxes, one in a kind of a budget line and one in their high-end line. The Chieftain sax, I think, is the high-end one. I, I love the sax. I love the Warren Cliff. I, I love everything about the usefulness of it. I also love the his history of it. I love the look of it. Yeah. We need a five and a half to six inch sax. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, let's do it. I'll sign a petition. I'll start a petition. All right. Let's awesome. I, I actually have a couple of designs. In, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the times I had, uh, I had, um, Oh my gosh! I'm totally spacing. One of one of the times I had Andrew Demko on the show, I told him that, like, as if he'd say, "Oh, send me your design and I'll make one." Like, I don't know what kind of fantasy I was on? But he was like, "Oh, that's cool." <laughs> we yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but I swear, someday, uh, a, yeah. sax, a sax on a Voyager or something like that. That would be cool. Yeah, a Voyager sax. Since they have all the different, the different ones for that Voyager, anyways, that would be awesome. You know what I want is I want them to bring back this one so you have to pay two hundred dollars to get into a towel oh, god yes so yeah. yeah i love the towel it's such an awesome knife and it's as light and thin and strong but yeah they need to bring this back so if anybody famous is watching or influential and i've talked to them before and they they, they act like nobody wants one but i think that if like the cold steel folks rose up and said hey you know, we got a thousand people right here. Yeah, I would buy one tomorrow. They would, they would come and bring them back. Cause I love the tower. I made the mistake of getting rid of my four inch, thinking I was going to get a five inch, and then it, the the supply dried up before I could move on it. Oh and, yeah. But you know what? I wish they would bring back, and in exactly the same form it was in, except maybe in an updated steel, is the black rhino. Oh man, I love that knife. I love the black rhino. Do you have yeah. one of those? I have two of them. You have two of them. I have one that I carry oh, in Rockefeller. In a coma. <laughs> One's in a, a sleepy, never come out coma. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I have two of them. Yeah, they're they're awesome. And I probably overpaid for them because I don't, you don't see them that much. And as soon no. as I saw them, I just kind of hit the, the buy button. And they didn't last for very long. Was that pre or post uh, triad? Does that have a triad lock on it? Yeah, it has a triad lock. Oh on my it. god! Oh, yeah, okay. All right, <laughs> all right. So we have we have a we have a to do list for Cold Steel. Uh, we we want to see the Black Rhino come back. Yes. Uh, we want to see the Talwar, especially in the XL, come back, and right. we want to see a Chris Blade in one of these XL folders. Now we'll give you the option. You could come up with a totally new handle. Uh, it could go in the handle of this. It would actually fit thematically kind of in this handle. Um, or, you know, it, 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 you can come up with it. Just just make us uh, an XL right, yeah. tax. Yeah, we'll take one of them. One of them for Christmas. Just get, well, give us one of these gifts for Christmas. Yeah, yeah, a so steady drip awesome. over the next three years. Well, Jimmy, I, I'm not here to take up much of your time, but I just wanted to uh, I wanted to dig in about the, about the cold steels. Uh, before we wrap up, what is your... Um, what was your very first of the of the large ones? The first of the big ones was actually a Aus 8 Recon, the big Recon. That's the one that kind of sold me on Cold Steel. Okay. I had a Craigslist adventure. I just started getting into knives again. And I went to a parking lot and a dude, I was there to actually pick up an American lawman. And he pulled out that Recon. And that was it. It was like my first hit of crack. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been the same since. So that was almost four and a half years ago. So yeah, I would go on. Was it, was it the Tanto or the clip point? The clip point. It was oh, the clip man. point. Yeah. Oh, man. With the, with the paint down the OS eight and everything like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I keep the four inch version uh, in my backpack, my daily carry backpack. I have long since taken the, the coating off it to reveal that beautiful stone wash underneath but uh, he actually he had one that he had taken the coating off of and one 
that he was selling that it was you know brand new. So I, I went ahead and took both of them. I was done. It was it. <laughs> nice. Well, this is this was my first. This is the uh, the six oh, wow. the six inch um, Vaquero Grande. Before That's it was cool. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, this is cool. And you know what? It it even though this is pre triad lock, the, their lockbacks were damn strong. Back. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, great knife. I'm I'm glad to have this. Anyway, Jimmy, thanks for coming on the show and uh, and and just uh, nerding out with me for a minute on on the Cold Steel XLs. Um, I can't think of anyone better to talk to about them. Man, I'm so glad to be back. I really appreciate it. And anytime you want to talk to me, just let me know and I'll be there. So I appreciate it. All righty, sir. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. You too. Thank you. All right.